Hello and welcome to Aging Matters, a program featuring people who talk about issues of interest to older adults and their families. I'm Cheryl Bebersdorf, your host. Today, Aging Matters TV show is pleased to present a program about Tai Chi, a Chinese system of slow, meditative physical exercises designed for relaxation, balance, and health. My guest is Peter Schwartz, a Tai Chi instructor with the School of Tai Chi Chuan of Northern Virginia. He will talk about the physical and mental health benefits of Tai Chi and what older adults need to know when practicing the exercises. During the program, Peter will demonstrate the steps participants practice during a typical Tai Chi session. So welcome, Peter, and thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Well, Peter, let's get started by giving more information about Tai Chi. What does it really mean, literally, and, and where did it originate? Well, Tai Chi, uh, they say, they don't really know, Tai Chi originated in the uh, 13th century in China. And uh, a monk, a Shaolin monk, uh, uh, Chan San Feng, is credited with uh, uh, creating it. He saw um, a, a cock, a bird, and a snake fighting, and he noticed how the snake uh, dealt with the attacks of the cock by yielding and keeping its ground, not running away, but yielding and coming back to be able to strike. And so that gave him sort of the kernel of the idea of, of Tai Chi as a martial uh, system. And it is, it, so it originated in China. Correct. Is, is that correct? Correct. So we've already talked about the fact that it provides benefits. So yeah. talk about the physical level. What, what are we talking about in, in, as far as health benefits? Okay. So there's some big, big health benefits. One, of course, is it strengthens your legs enormously but in a relaxed way. It uh, improves your balance tremendously, uh, but not just your static balance, uh, your balance as you move through the world. So it's a lot more useful than being able to uh, stand in a, in a posture uh, and, and in a studio this, you know, you, you have balance while you move, so which is more like what you need in your daily life. Uh, there's a recent study that came out that uh, showed that Tai Chi was as, or I believe, more effective at lowering blood pressure than uh, cardio and weight training. Uh, it's had a lot of important, it's been studied a lot, and it's had a lot of important effects on things like Parkinson's disease, even Alzheimer's disease, all kinds of conditions, you know, heart conditions, um, and of course, osteo conditions, you know, if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, it can help with that as well. Arthritis? Arthritis, yes, we'll show that a little bit when we do the demonstration. Because I was just thinking in terms of older adults, they often do have physical pains and, and uh, aches and pains that could really benefit. Yeah, from well, this. one of the things that... that's interesting is that in Tai Chi, we work all of the joints in the body. So of course we work the, the uh, ankle joints, the knee joints, the hip joints, the elbows, the shoulders, but we also work the little joints like in your fingers. So it's sort of a full joint uh, uh, workout, if you will. Well, we're so. looking forward to that demonstration sure. so you can show that part. Um, I was also thinking about emotional or even social. What, what, what could you tell us about that? Okay, so there's a phrase, uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it goes something like this, be still like a mountain, move like a river. So the idea is to find the quiet this, your centered quiet in the midst of all the movement of life. And when you're quiet, to also have movement. And um, 
So Tai Chi, Tai Chi focuses in this area, the lower belly, in a, a place called the Dantian, which is a, a Chinese word. It's spelled D-A-N-T-I-A-N. And um, it, it translates as the field of Gan. And Gan was considered to be a vegetable that had um, sort of supernatural powers. And so they believed that it, it uh, added to your longevity. But more practically, it's the center from which you move. It's the center uh, where you want your awareness to abide, abide. So normally we're kind of up in our heads, right? We're thinking, thinking, thinking. And this allows you to bring your focus down, 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 down here. And then your senses become like little periscopes. You know, if this were the submarine with the captain down here, you send up these periscopes, they can see out your eyes, hear out your ears, smell out your nose, but what's going, the, the, the central command center is here. And this is where you move from, and this is where you sense, perceive, you are aware of what's happening inside you and around you. And social, um, I w am aware that there that you teach classes, and I'm assuming that there are a lot of people who come to your classes. Yeah. So there's a social aspect of Tai Chi as well. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, when I first started, I really wasn't looking for Tai Chi. I uh, I was looking for I had hurt my knee as a as a runner, and I was just looking for some other exercise that I would do. And I met this guy uh, at the gym and he said, why don't you try Tai Chi? And I said, what's that? And he showed me a little bit, looked interesting. And I just kept going. And I think initially it was just a really pleasant way to spend a Tuesday evening. And so there's a lot of camaraderie that happens in class, especially after a while. And um, because this is a martial art, although I don't teach it as a martial art, uh, there's a lot of interpersonal aspects to it that we can get into at some point. It's a little more complicated, but yeah, it helps with the interpersonal a great deal. Is Tai Chi really an exercise per se when we think about exercises, um, or does it even qualify as a workout? Tell us a little bit well, more about that. Oh, okay. So how to put this? Yes, it is an exercise. Uh, you move. Uh, it can, you can build up a lot of heat when you do it. Uh, typically, people who come in on a winter's day, you know, in from, uh, from outside, they'll have layers on. And after the first, you know, 10 minutes of Tai Chi, they'll start taking layers off. Um, so it, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a calorie burner just to be honest with you. Uh, but it is a, a flexibility enhancer. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's an exercise. You move, you know, you move. But it's different than sit-ups or touch your toes. Well, yes, it's, things it's not, like that. It's not um, strenuous in that way. Okay. It's okay. sort of the opposite to no, no, uh, no pain, no gain. In Tai Chi, if there's pain, there's no gain, actually. So. Okay. Well, and at the same time, I was wondering, are there any disadvantages? I mean, you've spoke very highly about this exercise, but are there certain things that we should be aware of? Well, okay. So uh, people who are extremely A-type uh, really can use Tai Chi. I mean, it's really sort of built for them but they may have difficulty slowing down enough to really kind of stay with it. So, so uh, it's not that I wouldn't recommend it for them. I would recommend it for them even more, but they might, they will have to, they'll encounter their own impatience, I think, and a lot of times do uh, when doing it. So there is that. Um, and the routine, you know, it's about a 12 minute, altogether 12 minute routine. There are many longer routines, Tai Chi routines, uh, can be challenging to learn. 
And I was sometimes. I was wondering if if someone has a disability, might that be a, a possibility that they couldn't perform the exercises as well? Well, uh, no, that's not not you can do tai, tai Chi is typically done standing, uh, but I do a seated form of Tai Chi, and there is a whole series of exercises that my teacher's teacher, uh, Grandmaster Chen Men Ching, developed for his mother, who couldn't do the form that he taught, that he developed, but wanted to have all the benefits of Tai Chi. And so he, t he sort of extracted pieces of the form and, 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 and put them together as a series of postures and movements discrete postures and movements. I'll show you some later. Okay. Um, that, that give you all the benefits of Tai Chi. They give you the principles. The principles are the key thing in Tai Chi. So it sounds like what you're saying is, is that, obviously we're talking about aging matters here and older adults, that Tai Chi is safe for older adults. Oh yes, oh adults. totally safe, totally safe. And I mean, we even thinking older adults can be anywhere from say 50 to 90, 100 oh, overall? Oh, absolutely. In fact, in China, uh, the tradition is that um, as you cultivate your chi through doing Tai Chi, Tai Chi, I should say, um, it does promote longevity. And so uh, the more you do, the longer you live is the idea. And I won't vouch for that, but uh, I'm... I'm what, 101 now, and uh, I think I look And you're pretty, still going, I think I going strong. Good, Obviously, so, yeah. Tai Chi has been very good for you. Yeah. So if, if you think about, again, the exercises, would there be anybody that you would say probably shouldn't do Tai Chi, that if they come to your class or they talk with you about doing Tai Chi, that you would say, no, I don't think that's the right... Mm -hmm. Uh, exercise for you? No, I, I can't. I can't imagine it. Even if somebody can only sit, or if somebody needs a cane to walk with, or a walker to walk with, or needs to hold on to a chair or something, uh, they can. You know, they can do. They can get something from Tai Chi, and a lot actually. They can get a lot. And, well, at this time. Peter will demonstrate the steps included and performed by participants during a typical Tai Chi session. So let's watch. So I'd like to start this demonstration with some basic principles. The first basic principle is the idea of shoulders width. You want your feet to be as far apart as your shoulders are far apart. If your hips are wider than your shoulders, you can use your hips. Basically, the idea is that this is the basis of your stability. You want your whole body supported by your feet. When you're standing here, you allow your lower back to relax down which causes your knees to unlock a little bit. And you may feel your feet come into uh, fuller contact with the floor. Moving up the spine, you come to this spot, the crown on the head. You feel a string, a golden thread, drawing up your head towards the heavens, which straightens the head so you look straight onto the horizon line. You don't want your chin sticking out. So your head becomes a part of your spine. Your eyes are soft, meaning they're not focused on any particular object, but suddenly you can see a wide expanse of your environment. So this is, of course, important if you're doing this as a martial art, but it's also important in life to be aware of your environment. You're breathing through your nose. The tip of the tongue is on the roof of the mouth. 
your chin is down. And when you breathe, the air goes all the way down, fills your lungs from the bottom to the top. You can use this little triangle with the thumbs in your belly button to feel how your breath raises and lowers your stomach, your belly. Going from the center of this triangle back towards your spine, a third of the way, you come to your Dantian, which I mentioned earlier. This is your movement center, and it's also the seat of your deepest intuition. When we say you have a gut feeling about something, you just know something in your gut, we're really talking about knowing it in your Dantian. So this is the first thing we learn. We learn to stand. And when you get this position correct, you can stand here eventually for a very, very long time. I call this sitting down while standing up. From here, we turn the right foot out a little bit. I shift my weight into the right leg. So the left foot is free to step forward a little bit like this. So it's going straight forward. I'm facing forward, the left foot is facing forward. And I'm gonna shift my body towards the left foot and then shift back towards the right foot. We call this exercise sculling. We use the image of a person uh, standing on a sandpan, which is a flat bottom boat that they use throughout Asia. And there's a, a oar that goes down uh, like this, down into the, uh, off the stern and the bow is this way. And we make the boat move by moving the oar back and forth. So one of the things we learn doing this exercise is how powerful our bodies are. Not our arms, but our whole torso. It's the power of the body moving that moves the oar. And you can use this in your life when you have to move heavy objects like furniture or uh, refrigerators or cars even. There's no pushing off with the feet. We're just moving the body from the Dantian. So you can imagine my hands resting on the oar. I push forward and the oar, this is the power stroke. I come back and the oar comes back with me. When you get tired of this side, you just change sides, you turn the left foot out, step forward with the right, and continue on. So one of the things to note in a more practical sense is how this exercise works the joints. You can see that the uh, ankle joints are moving, the knees are moving, and the hips are moving. So this is very good for keeping the, uh, the big joints in your body uh, moving. <laughs> this is called sculling. So this is one of the preparatory exercises I do before we start doing the actual Tai Chi form. So to start the form, we stand with our heels touching and our toes out. We allow our lower back to relax, our eyes to go soft, to feel our, the lift from here. And we shift all of the weight onto the right leg. So immediately you can see how this is working your balance because you're putting, you're standing on one leg and then the other leg. 
The breath raises the arms. Inhale and then an exhale. You shift all of your weight into the left, turning to the right, and then shift all of your weight into the right and step forward. Slide left and rotate to the front. So you can see this is basically the same posture we were in earlier with the sculling. This is called ward off left. And we shift all of the weight into the left leg so you have the balance that you're working as you move and as you step. Shifting right, rotating. This is ward off right. I now have 70% of the weight in the right. This is the rollback. This whole section is called uh, grasp sparrow's tail. This is the press. Shifting back. This is the push. Shifting back 100% of the weight into the left. 100% of the weight into the right. Stepping left. So here you have a balance and working the strength of the legs. 70% into the left and rotate. 100% into the left. So again, all the weights on the left leg. Lifting hands. Coming forward with the right side. White stork spreads its wings. Again, all the weight in the right. Brush knee, twist step, left one. Shift all the weight into the left, pick up the right foot. All the weight into the right. Left foot comes to the heel. Rotate, step. Shift and rotate. Shift all the weight into the right. All the weight into the left. All the weight into the right. Rotate. This is parry. This is punch. Push all the weight in the right leg, all the weight in the left leg, cross hands. I hope Peter's demonstration of steps participants usually practice during a typical Tai Chi session was useful. So Peter, I noticed the, your, in your demo, I was wondering, since you had that symbol there, could you tell us a little bit more about that before we talk about what other people need to know in sure. terms of practicing Tai Chi? So Tai Chi is translated as Supreme Ultimate. This is considered to be the supreme principle by which the universe operates. And when you add uh, chuan or chuen to it, it means supreme ultimate fist. And that's when you're using this principle or aligning yourself with this, uh, this set of principles uh, for martial uh, skill and ability. So it's like harness, in a sense, sort of harnessing the forces of the universe uh, to mostly defend yourself, not so much to um, attack other people. So, okay. Anyway. Well, that helps us to prepare then yep. and our, our viewers. And so in addition to knowing a little bit about Tai Chi, help us understand a little bit about 
how else to prepare? Like, do you need special clothing, uh, shoes, uh, equipment? What do we need to know? So um, you just, all you need is loose fitting clothing that you would can move in easily. Lots of street clothing would work. Uh, you want to have a flat shoe. I'll take off my shoe here. You can see it. It's a little bit grody, but this is an all cotton shoe. They sometimes call this a kung fu shoe. And um, this is the ideal shoe to wear. But you can use on a hardwood floor, you can use socks, or if you need to, bare feet. So anything like that is fine. And no equipment. Zero equipment. Let's talk about your training and, and help us understand if you were going to look for a Tai Chi instructor, what do you want to know about that person? What kind of training did you have? What would uh, people need to know as to best so places? What, yeah, so what I recommend is that you find a, a teacher. A, the, the most important thing is you find a teacher whom you like, who creates a nice, warm, friendly, fun, environment in the class. That's really important. Um, you, you want to want to go to class, you know. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, it's good to find a teacher who has studied for some years, I think, you know, I don't know how many exactly, but uh, you want to find somebody who's part of a lineage, who, who studied with somebody who was a master, and who in turn studied with somebody else who was a master. So the, the question is often po uh, uh, stated as, who is your teacher? You, you, might ask your t you might ask a prospective teacher, who is your teacher? And then they say who the teacher was. And then you might ask, who is your teacher's teacher? And who is your teacher's teacher's teacher kind of thing and go back. To, to know that you're part of a, a genuine lineage that goes back uh, to, the, to the source. Okay. So. Well, I just wanted to ask one quick sure. question, and that is, is that how many times a week should people practice uh, Tai Chi? As many times as they can, really. Uh, the basic, the minimum, sort of the minimum that people recommend is five minutes in the morning after getting up and five minutes before you go to bed, something like that. Five, okay. ten minutes, that kind of thing, and any amount otherwise that you can fit into your day. Final question. Best resources to learn more about Tai Chi and how can the viewers contact you? Okay, well, I'll give you the, my URL first. That's easy www.thetaichischool.org. Um, beyond that, um, there are lots of books that were written by my teacher's teacher, Professor Chen Men Cheng, who developed the form that I uh, practice and teach. And I think it's a good starting point. There's a lot out there. I mean, it's a real, once you delve into Tai Chi, there's a lot, you know, and uh, lots of conflicting views on this, that, and the other thing. Um, but, but Chen Men Cheng is a good place to start, I would say. Okay. Well, I want to thank my guest, Peter Schwartz, Tai Chi instructor with the School of Tai Chi Chuan of Northern Virginia for joining me today. This program will be posted on the Aging Matters TV show YouTube channel. Also, Aging Matters is produced as a podcast. Programs are released every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on Apple, Spotify, and other podcast sites. So be sure to check out the Aging Matters website, agingmattersonline.com, for more information about our radio programs, podcasts, and TV episodes. Thank you for watching the program today, and please join me again for the next Aging Matters show. And until then, remember, Age is just a number, not a label.